Welcome back to the channel guys. A few of you have requested me to make this video over the last couple years. I just haven't gotten around to do it, but today is the day. I'm gonna show you guys how to fish with the almighty trout magnets, just like these. Mostly we'll use them early in the spring and later in the fall when that water's real cold and the bite gets a little more tough. So I'm gonna show you the setup right now and then we're gonna go out on the water and actually catch some fish with these. I guess we'll go over the actual trout magnet itself. You can get these in a variety of different colors. They're all this size, the trout magnet. They do make a crappy magnet, which is a little bit bigger than that. Um, I actually have one right here. So this is the crappy magnet, and this is the trout magnet. You can see how much smaller it is. Can catch trout on these, by the way. But the trout magnet is the one we're going over today. So this is what it looks like. This is the black one. It's just a small little grub, a little split tail grub here. You can see it's got two tails there. And that's all it is. You can get them in pretty much any color you want. My favorite colors to use are the more natural colors, the blacks, the browns, you know, some of these gold with blacks. These things are great because depending on the coloration that you get, these can imitate so many different things. Anything from bugs like stoneflies, like this guy here and this guy, some type of grub that could be in the water or a minnow, depending on what color you get. Like I said, it's a pretty versatile bait that you can use. So I really recommend checking out the pack that I have down in the description below. It gives you a ton of different colors, a bunch of different jig heads. They make uh, multicolored jig heads. Uh, I usually stick with silver gold. Gold is kind of the standby. And then on a darker day, I'll use like their, their darker like black, um, black jig head. I know this is gonna be very basic and you wouldn't think you need to know this, but I'm just gonna show you real quick how you do rig this up. So we take our jig head here that they give us and we take our trout magnet. So what you wanna actually do is thread the hook down so it comes out between these two legs. So we start at the top here, go down the middle, all the way till it comes out between these two legs. Trying to make it so you guys can see. Comes out in between there like that. And it's made perfectly to fit just like that. So the, we wanna rig it up like that because that gives it the most action for these little legs to kick around, gives it a little vibration, makes it look a little more lively in the water. You need a ultra light spinning rod because this is such, this bait is so light, you're not gonna be able to cast it with anything heavier than that. And like I said, this is my personal preference of doing this. I'll give you a couple options of how you can set it up depending on what type of water you're gonna fish. And then I'll show you what I use pretty much all the time. So if you're gonna be fishing smaller streams, little creeks, things like that, you're backpacking in somewhere, um, bushwhacking, you don't want a long rod, you can get a short little rod like this. This is actually a four foot six micro series. This is real small. And uh, this is good for just dabbling around in little brooks and stuff. It's an ultra light. And I'll link this down in the description below. And what I have on here is just a small little 500 size Shimano small reel small rod and i would just rig that with either really light fluorocarbon or mono i have i actually have the trout magnet line on this this is a two pound line i use on this this stuff's pretty good you can buy this as well I'll link that down in the description below so that's my setup for real small streams and creeks where i don't need a longer rod but pretty much anything else i'm using my jt panhandler rod this is a seven foot ultra light spinning rod so it's a one piece spinning rod. I'll link it down in the description below. I have a promo code if you guys wanna buy one of these. This is my all around trout rod. I use it for a lot of different techniques for trout fishing and crappie fishing. So it's a really great trout rod and caught a lot of big fish on it. So medium to bigger water, I'm gonna be using this. It's a seven footer, so it's a little bit longer. And especially if you're fishing these with a float, which we'll talk about later, you want a little bit longer rod. When you go to set the hook, if you have a lot of line laying in the water, it just picks up line faster when you set the hook with a seven foot rod as opposed to a five foot rod. So it'll give you more chances at fish if you have a lot of line laying on the water, it just picks it up faster. It also helps you mend your line. You can get the rod tip out there and mend your line a little bit so you don't get some weird drag on your float. And it just helps you cast it a little bit further. The reel I have on here is uh, it's a Shimano Stratic 1000 size. You don't need to go out and buy a Stratic, but uh, 1,000 size spinning spinning reel like this. Shimano makes a really good one. Pretty much any Shimano that you get, you can buy You know their cheaper models. They're great, they last, the drag's good. 1,000 size is all you need. 10 pound braid spooled up on this rod right here would work great if you're using a float. 
uh, the braided line floats and you can see it on the water better if you get like a higher visibility color and you can actually mend the line a little bit better uh, because it sits on top of the water um, fluorocarbon you can use I don't usually have a lot of luck with fluorocarbon uh, I just can't get it to stay on my reel, reel very well. It has a lot of memory and it's just, it's kind of a pain. So the line that I like to use is the P-Line CX Premium 6 pound. I use that for pretty much everything in trout fishing on this rod right here. You see I got it spooled up there. I use it for spoons, spinners, crankbaits, float fishing. It's just a really versatile line to use. It works with everything. The stuff is super strong. It's a fluorocarbon coated monofilament so you get a lot of abrasion resistance and it's just a great line to use. So let's go over to some flowing water. We'll go over to a local stream here and we'll go see if we can catch some trout in these and we'll talk you through what we're doing and how we're catching them on them. All right guys, so we're going El Natural here. I just got my main line tied directly to the trout worm. No float at all. Um, we'll see if I need to add weight or not, but I'm just gonna cast it out here, sort of like along the seam here, let it drift out to the tail end of that run. Just kind of dabble it. If you don't think you're getting down deep enough, if the current's a little too swift, you can always add split shot and just start out with a small split shot 18 inches or so above your bait. Just keep adding weight until you think you've gotten down deep enough. If you start ticking bottom, that's actually oh. a good sign. That means that you're fishing right in the strike zone. Just kind of let the current take it. Kind of hop it every now and then, give it a little bit of action. Got one. Got one. Oh. Brook chop. Get him in here. Nice colors on him too. Sweet. Alright. That's a nice pretty fish right there. Let him catch his breath a little bit. He hung out in the current, gave us a little bite. So I'm not really sure if I even just got that small mouth on camera. That was pretty sweet though. He hit it right down in this deep hole right here under these rocks. I could feel it. I could actually feel, I was kind of tight lining this. Just keeping the line nice and, nice and tight with no sags or dips in it. And you can kind of feel bottom. If you have enough weight, um, you add a little bit of split shot, you can and you have a nice sensitive rod like this JT Pain Handler. You can actually feel bottom when you're ticking bottom of these. Just like Euro nymphing, it's the same concept. But we're not really, we're not reeling this in really. We're kind of just, wow. Wow. Okay. They're kind of just stacked right up right here. Like I said, we're not really reeling this in. We're just kind of hopping it along on the seam through the current here. And they're whacking it. It's what they're eating. And these fish right here, like this guy, he's he's fresh out of the hatchery anyways. Probably only been in here a week or so. And even some of these stockfish, like I said, they're keyed in on eating pellets from the hatchery. So this can even imitate that. Especially if you get the brown ones, the darker colors. We're using just straight black right now. And I would typically fish a deeper spot like this with a float. But I just kind of want to demonstrate how to fish it without a float. It's so noisy here, guys. I don't know if you can hear what I'm saying very much. But the cool thing about fishing these weightless like this is that the current can just kind of take it and do whatever it wants naturally. And that's exactly what the bugs are doing that are coming down through here. Typically, what you want to do is get down like this, cast over, and let it drift down casting right into the run over there, letting out some line, letting the current take it downstream. And then we're just gonna try to hop it along. We'll give it a few twitches every now and then, reel up the slack. You wanna watch your line too, because if that line goes tight, you wanna set the hook. Just like that. That's another brook trout, it looks like. 
We're making it pretty easy to do this video. That's it. Picture, let him go. All right guys, so now we're gonna rig up that trout magnet on a float. Now, there's a bunch of different floats you can use. So I'll show you guys the float that I like to use the most for this type of fishing. A lot of experienced fishermen are probably gonna laugh at this and uh, probably leave a comment, but you guys can kiss my ass. This thing works awesome. It is a weighted float. It's a one inch weighted float. You know, when, uh, when you just learned to fish, you would use one of those plastic bobbers, put a worm on there, it just has the little spring in there, clip it on your line. Same exact thing, but there's two differences. It's weighted. See this little lead piece? That's a weight. That allows you to cast further out into the run and not have to put a bunch of split shot on or into the lake or wherever you're fishing. Kind of gets out into the wind, keeps your line kind of from tangling us so much. And it's made out of foam. Instead of being made out of plastic like those ones you used to use, you hit a rock with it, you crack it, fills up with water, it's done. These things can take an absolute beating. The one that I uh, just replaced this with, it looks like a, a dog got a hold of it and I, it's still usable. I just figured I'd replace it for the video. All you have to do is figure out how deep you want to be. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go a few feet deep here. And so we got a trout magnet tied directly onto our line. We're gonna go, we're gonna go like four feet. And we're just gonna clip that on. You just push the bottom of your bobber here, clip it on your line, and then clip the top part on your line. Other cool thing about these is that if you need to adjust the depth, you don't have to do much. You just uh, push down on the spring, slide it up and down your line like that. Very adjustable, very easy to use. And this is what's super fun, is watching the float go down. Just like steelhead fishing. Same thing, let out some line. When that float goes down, you just start reeling. Cast right into the seam there. Bend your line a little bit. Yep, just got a hit right there. Bend your line a little bit. You can actually give it some action. You don't have to just float it around. You can, uh, a lot of times, like when it gets this far away and I'm ready to make another cast, you can kind of, oh, there's a fish right there. Bobber down, folks, bobber down. On the trout magnet and the foam. Float, weighted float. Oh, he's right there. I mean, come on. So, Ricky. As I was saying before we got that fish, say we're out here, we're in either at the tail end of a pool or in a lake, all you really have to do, you don't, you can just reel it back in, but if you want to try to catch a fish on the way in, you can kind of give it a little bit of action, kind of pop it along, reel up the slack, let it sit for a minute, pop it along, scoot, 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 reel up the slack, let it sit, scoot, 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 reel up the slack. This will give that trout magnet or whatever bait you're using a little bit of action, but now you're pulling on it, just kind of just kind of snap your line a little bit. You can see the tip of the bobber. I don't know how well you can see it, but I can see it pretty good. See the tip of the bobber shaking, popping up and down. That right there just gets the, you know, gives a little bit of action to that bait. So just find the natural current, let that float do its thing, and the fish will find it. I keep seeing a bunch of fish rise over in here, right behind me. And we're gonna try to see if we can cast this float. This is a nice, real slow drift down through here. And uh, so there's definitely some fish pooled up in here and hopefully we can get them to eat this trout magnet. I just switched over to a different color. Black with some gold on it. Should work just fine. So let's go try that. Actually, down there next to the bridge looks pretty good. A little bit faster moving in there. fish. Got him. Drifted way under the bridge there. Yeah, baby. There you go. Oh, Brookie.
nice slow drift out in there. That was pretty sick. Oh, popped right out. That's what I got him on there. You go, buddy. Thanks. Over on that shoreline. All right, it drifted way into the back of that. Fish. Oh. Bobber down, folks. Fishing under the bridge. Gotta love it. It's a nice colored one. Yeah, dude, that's a good fish. Sweet. Get that. She's a beaut. This pillar, sort of. I kind of like that. Boom. Oh, instant. It was instant. I wasn't even ready. I gotta put a new. I gotta put a new bait on. This one's all chewed up. Insto. Oh. Insta hook. Trout a magneto. Oh yeah. Got him right in the top of the nose. He's kind of towing me around. Get out of there. No, 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 no. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Come on. There we go. Set. That's the best one of the day so far. Come on. Sick. Look at that. Nice colors on it. Nice fish. Stocked, obviously. It's not really that nice because it's stocked, but nice size. He's got really good fall colors on him, that's for sure. Wide. Here he goes. So I've shown you guys a lot of techniques here for fishing in flowing water. You can use these same techniques in still water. What I've found is you typically have to add more split shot and lengthen out the distance between your float and your bait. Fishing these right during ice out and right before ice in can be really productive. I've had a lot of luck during those time periods using trout magnets. <laughs> these work really well on a day where it's a little more windy. You have a little bit of wave action on the lake. It gives that trout magnet some action. gets those legs kicking. So there you go, guys. That's my setup and how I fish the trout magnet. We caught some fish today, had some fun. Definitely go give it a try. Like I said, trout magnet pack is linked down in the description below. The weighted trout floats are also linked down in the description below for you guys. You guys just gotta try it for yourself. It's a ton of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Let's go.